Imagine a world where you can turn Excel into a complete intelligence library, uploading, chatting with, and summarizing any PDF in seconds. Hi, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers, and this week we're going to do just that when we summarize and chat with PDFs. I'm going to show you how you can quickly and easily upload any PDF, then complete a summary with just one click. Also, you're going to be able to chat asking any questions about that PDF and get immediate responses using AI intelligence in any language. It's going to be an incredible training. We're going to do it from scratch. So let's get started. All right, thank you so much for joining me. I've got a really fantastic training. I am super excited. In this training, we're gonna combine AI with PDFs and Excel to create the best intelligence library that you have ever seen. I do bring you these comprehensive trainings each and every Tuesday. If you're looking for basic VBA for beginners, I've got those every Saturday. So there is something for everyone here. Make sure you do get subscribed. Don't forget to click the notification icon bell. Also comment below. I respond to each and every comment. I love to hear your ideas, your feedback. If you have any ideas for an upcoming training, I put those into life as quickly as possible. And I really love your ideas. So what are we going to do this week? I'm super excited because this is going to allow you to take any type of PDF, any type of ebook in PDF format, upload it, get a quick summary of it in any language you want, and also create a chat. So if you wanna ask something about that, and you can just simply type in the chat. Let's take a look, we'll do that right now. Maybe we want to know what are the market factors? What are the market factors creating market tops? So we just hit enter, and then we just wait a few seconds, and it's automatically gonna come up. It's gonna look over that PDF, and it's gonna let us know all the market factors based on the PDF. So it's really great if you want to upload a PDF, all we need to do is click add a PDF. We can select a PDF from here. What it's going to do, it's gonna automatically upload that, get a code. We can easily save it. We can assign a category here, which is kind of nice. So maybe we want to assign this to a marketing category. Of course, we can create any marketing, save the PDF. We can get a quick summary. The summary can be any number of words we want. In the admin screen, we can set the number of summary words. If we want to increase it or decrease it. Get summary in just a few seconds. That summary is going to appear for us. And it's going to read over the entire and give us a quick summary. And once again, we can chat what are the top five take Always. It's really that easy document. So we can do that and then simply just chat. And so we can create a chat. And of course, it's actually a live chat so that we'll remember what we've said before. So if I ask another question, say, can I have four more? Let's do four more takeaways. It's going to answer it for us right away. It will remember the original question and give us more. So that's exactly what it's going to do. In fact, give us a few more five ways there. So it's really a great way to learn and automatically the chats are remembered if i go back to this chat the chats are remembered so we can look up any previous chat we can save a pdf delete it we can get the preview here if we want to clear the chat we can clear the chat window which is kind of helpful or we can delete a chat if we want to delete the entire log we can do that very very cool training so i've got a lot to share with you and of course we're going to do this from scratch i'm going to create this design right in front of you so you're going to learn a whole lot so make sure you do stick with us if you do like these trainings this template is absolutely free all you need to do is click the link down below and i'll make sure to get that right over to you with your email and name if you do want to support us there's some great ways to support our work and efforts here one of them is with the ai tool pack i designed this recently and we've got an ai assistant we can ask any questions in that about excel or any topic at all and so we've got an ai assistant here that's going to help us we also have inside the tool pack, we have fix my formula. We can select any formula, fix my code. We've got get table data. We can get any kind of a data inside Excel with that. Writing code or will actually write code. And we've got a really cool function that's going to help us. So that's the AI tool pack. If you're interested in that, I will include the link down below. All right, let's get started on this. Just a brief overview before we start creating this screen from scratch. 
We've got an admin screen here. Admin screen lets us know the PDF types. We've got an API key. The number of summary words, uh, we can include references in the chat. It's gonna go back to the document, meaning that we can know where in the document the information was found. A username, if we want, that's gonna help us for chat. And of course, the response language. If I change this language to a different one, it's gonna respond to a different. So if I choose Spanish, and then I go back to here, summarize, and let's just choose one where we don't have any chat. And we can say, uh, give me the top five, give me top five tips. And it's gonna respond in Spanish, which is kind of helpful. So we can use any language and the response will automatically be in that language. So super cool. So we see how now we have these in Spanish. So very, very cool. We can do any language we want. And so that's the admin screen, relatively simple. Very cool. So we've got a lot to share with you. The information, we've got a PDF database. This is gonna track all the PDFs that we've added. And we've got a chat database. It's gonna keep track of all the chats that we've had. So very, very cool. Let's get right into the design here. So what I'm going to do, saving our work here, I'm gonna move this over. And I've got one that's already blank here. And and this does have an admin screen, it does have the database, and it does have a chat. But we're going to start right on our summarized PDFs. So this is the screen we're going to design. It's a relatively simple screen. It won't take us long. I'm going to drop this down to show the tabs and commands. And I want to give the first two columns, let's say a gray color, that's going to be used for admin, and we're going to be hiding those. I also want to add a logo and a title here. I've got that inside the admin here. Why don't we just copy this, the one we have in the admin, and I'm going to paste it over here. It makes things a little bit quicker. Instead of admin and settings, we are going to call this summarize and chat with PDFs. So that's exactly what we're doing. Summarize, and we'll use the short ampersand. We will chat with PDFs because we get to chat with our PDFs, which is kind of a nice. We'll expand that all the way to the length of the screen to center that. And that's pretty much going to be it for the title. Now, what we also want to do is we want to have a button set. And of course, we want the icon sets. As we always do, we want to make sure that we have one column for a spacer that lets us space things nicely if we want to. Next up, what I want to do inside, let's say the fourth row, I want a few rows for information. I want to put whether we're going to show the PDF or not. So I want to create a a list of PDFs show PDF type and what we're going to do there inside here I want a list of PDFs so that way the list will appear down here and so we'll put here a call our PDF list then under that I want to put the name of the PDF let's just do PDF name and I want to put the type so I want the type in that list this is going to be merged and center because this is the top and this I'm going to write justified. Now, what are the type lists? Now, we've got a list here of PDF types, and this can be quite helpful. But what I would really like to do is I want to include this list, but I also want to include something called all types. So how would we do that? Well, we're going to create an additional list to do just that. And so let's do that. Let's say we want to create a list called this PDF types. And the first item is going to pick all types, all types because I want that to be included. So we're gonna put all types. And what else is gonna be included? Well, it's gonna be linked to our original list. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply gonna copy this all the way down here, and I'm gonna place it right here. I wanna paste the links of this. So we're gonna paste those links right there. And we see we've got the links. Now what we wanna do is I wanna create a named range for this specific item here. So how do we do that? So I'm going to go into the name manager and I'm going to create a new, I've got some names in there, which we'll go over. I'm going to call this PDF types and then with all. Then what I'm going to do is I want to create an offset because it's going to grow as we add or reduce types. So we're going to use an offset formula. I want that starting to be right here on all types. And I want no rows offset and no column. So I'm going to do a column and I want to know how many rows. So we're going to use count A, but I'm going to use all of what's inside the admin screen. I want to count what's in here. Now I'm also going to include the header because this is going to be the same as the alt type. So I'm going to go all the way down here, including the header and then close parentheses. Then what we're going to do is we're going to use comma, single column one. So I'm going to tab over here, tab back. And I want to make sure those dancing ants go around, including the alt types, which they do. I'm going to click okay. All right, very good. I also have a list of languages in the admin screen and I'm going to need that right here. So why don't we put here languages? 
because we've got a drop down list and then as we see we have a drop down list here but i want to make sure that drop down list now i've got it in my other sample and i just want to copy those right here i'm going to copy it from my other screen i'm just going to paste those languages in here make things a little bit quicker here and paste them in green so now i've got a list of languages and so this is what i want so we'll give those a little bit darker color those are the headers and then we have our list in green so we've got a nice list of both and we want to use the last possible row here so it's 22 so right here is the last one so i'm going to take this and i'm also going to give it all the borders because we know that that's a list it's already been defined give it the color not that color this lighter color right here very good so now that we have that pdf types and languages i want to make sure that we have a named range for our languages i believe i've already created it here called languages and i'm going to tab over and we see again we have a summary and it's based on all the languages that's just a fixed named range that is the same named range that i'm going to use right here inside response language if we go to the data validation here and we list we see its languages okay so it's just a simple drop down list of the languages that we can choose from very good so now that we have our languages i want a little bit more in the admin before we move on so here's our pdf list so this is where our drop down list of that new range that we just created so what we're going to do in here is i'm going to go into the home then what i'm going to do actually we'll go to the data validation with the formats after data validation and then what we want to do is click on the data validation and i'm going to use a list value now we've created it before but if you don't remember the name we'll just click f3 what that's going to do is going to launch all the names and it's right here pdf types with all we're going to click ok and we're going to click ok now we see we've got a drop down list of all the names perfect so we'll get to the formatting we also want a nice background on this i do have a background that i've saved up created with midjourney so i'm going to select on the background here i'm going to click work offline i've got one inside the folder right here this background here is kind of nice so that's going to give us our background now we're going to give it some colors here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make sure these are centered these are my headers so i want to make sure those are in the center right here all of them and then i'm going to give them a color i've got some saved colors format for this i'm going to use control one what that's going to do is going to launch the format cells we're going to go into the fill and then the fill effects here and i've got a bit of a darker color here and we're going to go to a medium color right here and click ok and then okay that's going to be for our header now our subheader is going to take on a little bit of the same color again one time control one here and we're going to go into the fill effects because we want that fade i'm going to use this medium color here that we just said and then to a lighter color one of these two colors either they're almost about the same and we're going to click okay and okay okay great so we've got that now i'm going to give this a color here which is also our recent color here and perfect so we have that and now what we're going to do is we're going to set some borders on them all those are going to be the headers so we can set a border color if we want we've already got a line color here line color here is already set to one of our constants so we can use all the borders around there so now the user can select now as they select whatever type there that list is going to show up right here which is exactly what i want we also want to add some data inside here it's just a small information about the pdfs each individual pdf is going to have its own unique id pdf id so to do that notice that i've deleted number five so we can delete them but each one will have its own unique id and i also want to know the row numbers associated so the pdf id is a named range that i've already created to help move things along name manager and we're going to call that pdf id so notice the pdf id is the named range for all those given items so knowing that let's assume that pdf id was in b2 and we're going to call this pdf id i also want to know the database row that's associated pdf database row and i want to know the next pdf id i also want some information about that pdf i want to know the local path that means the path on your computer and i also want to know the source id and we'll get to exactly what that source id is and i want to know the required fields when i save a pdf i want to make sure all the fields have been filled out name the type and we want to make sure there's a local path and all that stuff so we're going to have to make sure of that this area up here is going to be saved for a button set we're going to use a button set now all along i'm going to give these a color so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go to home here give those some borders here give it unique color because they're going to be for admin which we'll use i'm going to write justify these two because i don't want them to bleed over these are going to be on the left and this one could be on the left here great so what is our database row that's associated with pdf 
ID number one. Well, we know it's on row four. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the formula equals. And if there's an error, if it's not found, I want to return empty. I'm going to use the match formula. I'm looking up PDF ID one, and I'm going to look it up inside the name range called PDF ID. I want an exact match at zero. I want to get the row number. I'm going to add three because our first one starts on row four. If there's an error, I just want to return empty. That's going to tell us PDF ID one is on row four. Perfect. The next PDF, we're going to use equals if error once again. And this time we're going to use the max formula, max of PDF IDs. So the maximum of all those, make sure they are numerical plus one, which means the next one that's going to be. And then also in case there's any error, there could be an error. If for some reason there's no data, I want to default it to one, which is going to be our starting. Great. So it tells us our next PDF ID is number eight. If I look in our database, we see that our next one would be eight. Perfect. Okay. These are going to be filled in automatically. This one required fields. I'll go over that in just a moment. We need to create those fields. So let's do just that. What other fields do we need for an individual PDF? Well, I need to know the PDF name inside row number two. We're going to add that right here. So it's going to be PDF name, and we're going to put that in G next up. I want to know the PDF type that's going to go there. And then I want a summary. So the summary, it's going to go here. We're going to create a lot of rows for that. Our summary is going to go all the way here. So this is our summary here. We're going to use three or four rows for our summary. I'll use four rows. So it drops all the way down here. That's going to be merged and centered. I'm going to hold down the control. So any field the user is going to enter is going to be in white. So I'm holding down the control and I'm going to color that in white. I'm going to give it some borders and I also want a left border on that. So I'm going to format those cells and that left border is going to be a dotted line. So I'm going to use the same constant color here i'm going to update it here because this one that's fine that looks pretty good i'm going to hold down the control once again making sure that we got the format i'm going to right justify these give it our background color which is this i'm going to use the borders all the way around and then once again i'm going to use our formatting cells and i just want that dotted line on the right side this time to make it consistent okay very good so we've got our summary here we've got our pdf name here and our pdf type our pdf type is already based on this pdf type so we want a data validation for those which we have already so if we go into the formulas name manager and we go into the pdf types we see that i've already created a name range for the pdf types here so all we need to do is use that as the data validation here. So we're going to set the data and then the data validation here. And then what we're going to do is create a list type and we're just going to call it equals PDF types and then hit enter. That's going to be sufficient. And we can show all of our PDF types. We can also simply just start typing it and it's going to appear. So our PDF name will go here. We are going to put our PDF preview here. So we don't need anything there. That's going to be good. Now I do want to create something for the chat, which is going to be here. And we need save room for the button sets. Now our chat, I really want to have a text box because I want it scrollable. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a text box for that. And now I also want to put in some sort of a chat so the user can chat. So if we bring it up here, just to make sure that we've got the right room on the screen, I want to make sure that everything fits accordingly. So our chat's going to go down here. So we have all of our chat. We're going to use column K for that, our entire column K. And we're going to start inside, let's say K35 to K37. So we're going to use those three here. I'm going to, again, merge and center those. And I want it left justified and then the upper and giving it a color of white because it's going to be user entered. And then we'll just use the borders all the way around. So this is where our chat's going to be. Now, when the user enters a question, they're going to press the button here. So all the way here is going to be our list of our chat. So what do we want to enter? If I go into the developers, I want to enter a text box because I want to have it scrollable. Design mode is correct. I want to enter that. And I'm going to insert here. So we're going to take a look here. And we're looking for something like this text box active x now these are not necessarily available on max but i really like the ability to control a lot of things that have a scroll so i'm going to click here and i'm going to enter this text box right about something like that giving a little bit of room and we'll use the column width entirely so we have a text box now what i'd like to do is i'd like to format this a little bit and add some properties so again we're going to go inside the developer and i want to make sure that the properties are visible for this I'm going to give it a name. That name, we're going to be called chat box. It's going to be a unique name. Auto load. We can take a look at some of the properties here. I'm going to give it a font. I'm going to use Unicode here. 
I'm going to scroll down here. The reason I want Unicode is we're going to be using different languages and Unicode is going to help us with that. We can increase the font to 12. I may increase it and we're going to click OK. All right. So now we've got font Unicode. We can do a border color consistent with our theme. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to palette and I've saved it right here. If you want to create a custom color, all you need to do is right click and create a custom color. I have it already because I want that border color to be consistent with our theme. So I've already saved it, which is this green one here. And also we want the border style. We'll do it single and uh, let's go down here. Now we also want some information. I won't have a linked cell max length. We don't need so multi line is definitely going to be true. We want that. So double click on that wrapping the text we definitely want true because we want to wrap it and uh text align that's a left that's correct special flat i think we could just uh that's flat's fine for that very good so that's about the way we want it now let's just put in some text here so let's not link that and there's no link on that so we if we take a look at that we have our text box we've given it a name chat box which is correct and now when we let's escape out of there and what we want to do is we want to get out of design mode so we're out of design mode now we can go in and add that's perfect i like the font size here it's looking good so just remember if you want to interact with it we need to make sure that we're out of design if you want to interact and work on some of the properties you want to click design mode then we select on it if you're not in design mode developer let's get out of design mode if you're not in there and you click on it it's just normal interaction with the form all right great so we've got our chat box that's where our chats are going to go we've given it a correct name it's relatively simple now we're ready to add our button sets so let's do that what i'm going to do is i'm going to save our work so far then what i'm going to do is i'm going to make sure that we insert let's escape out of there so we can activate that then we're going to insert here a shape and then the types of shape we're going to be using just with some rectangles so the first is we're going to put it up here now we also don't necessarily need to see the grid lines on here so we can take the grid lines off and we want to give it a distinct color so what we're going to do is i'm going to give it a shape and i can use not this one here this one looks pretty good right here so inside there let's type in add pdf and i want to format this one button once i get this formatted up there we can drop this down then we can do the rest pretty quickly i'm going to put it in the middle and right justify that and i'm going to set it to bold that looks pretty good so we've got add pdf here and i want to duplicate that once we create all the buttons then we add all the icons i'm going to move that over here we're going to call this save this is going to be for our save save pdf and the last one is going to be delete so i'm going to use Control d for duplicate and then delete pdf so delete PDF and we'll make this one a little longer if you want that third option in the middle here you just need to zoom in a little bit as we've done and we can increase this one just a little bit so we have room for the font perfect now what we want to do is we just want to line these up so I'm going to hold down the control put them in the middle and I want to make sure that we are distributing them horizontally they're good just as they are I like that let's zoom out a little bit and take a look okay we also want some information here I forgot we need a button set so I'm just going to go back I want to put some buttons here so this chat box need to be reduced slightly that's okay all we need to do again is go into the developer here design mode and then we can just reduce this a little bit saving some room for the button sets which is about like that and then getting out of design okay I want to create three more buttons so what I'm going to do is just hold down the control here and then I'm going to duplicate that control D duplicating all three bringing them over right here now what we want to have is I want this one to be called get summary that's going to let us know what that summary is inside so get all in caps summary and then again we can increase the width of that since we're going to need more next up what I would like to do is I'd also like to be able to clear the chat so clear chat and increasing that we want to save room for the icon next up we want to be able to delete the chat log so that chat log I want to be able to not only clear it which doesn't delete the history but just clears the current and we want to delete the entire chat log so we can have the option to do all of those very good so now that we've got our buttons here pretty much set up I am going to then put them in the middle and distribute them properly okay we're just about ready to add I want to add one more button and that's going to be for our chat so I'm going to copy this and paste it and then I'm going to get rid of any text on that and I'm going to drop this down here this is going to be for our chat when you want to send a chat we're going to make this button pretty much square something about like that and putting it right here very good so I like that now we're ready for the icons we can zoom out a little bit making sure that we have everything that fits inside other than the hidden so that's looking pretty good so we see we're going to have room for our pdf preview here our list will go down here let's make these bold here we want our headers to be in bold for our list 
looking pretty good. So let's continue on saving our work and we're going to add those icons now. So I'm going to click insert pictures here and then we want to place them over the cell in this device and I've got some icons saved in here and I'm pretty much going to use them all so we can see here. So we're going to insert them just like that. Now we want to make them all the same size. So we're going to set the picture format and the height point to the width will be adjusted automatically. Now all we need to do is just move those according and just place them in our buttons. So our delete, we're going to use that twice. I need that one for delete to PDF. I'm going to duplicate that using control D and I'm going to bring it over here because I need it for the delete log. Clearing the chat log as well. So we can use a different icon for that. So I'm going to use this little paint brush here, this broom actually, not paint brush. And then I want to get the summary. I've got that one right here, get summary and sending. We're going to use that. I might make that a little bit bigger here. So we're going to bring that right over here and that looks pretty good. And next up, I would like the PDF inside the folder. That's going to be our add PDF save. We're just going to use the check and then uh, that's okay. We don't need this add new. I don't think we're using that. Okay. I can delete that. Everything's looking good. Now what we want to do is simply group them. I'm going to make this one a little bit larger, this button here. So we have room for it's a little bit bigger icon. I'm going to hold down the control move them both in the middle and group them i'm going to do the same thing for each individual button in the middle grouping them and then i want to group them together so once they're all in the middle and they're grouped individually i also want to then group them but i'm going to move this delete give it a little bit more space between this once again lining them up distributing them grouping them together once they are grouped together i'm going to use control one and the reason i want to use that is because i want to make sure that our properties is move but don't size as I if I decide I want to reset these columns I want to make sure those button sets don't move next up what we want to do is do the same exact thing with our buttons here so again we're going to set our icons move them and make sure that they're centered and positioned just the way we like them inside the middle and then group individually same thing with clear chat here in the middle grouped individually and lastly with our delete log here making sure that we have everything nicely centered and it's really helpful to have your buttons that you use at the top individually in the middle again distributed grouped together and move but don't size lastly our chat button here simply going to select both of those and i want to make sure that this one's in the middle and then grouped and then once again move but don't size okay good we're set with our button sets we were able to do that relatively quickly we can close it up and we can start to get to the function of this because we've done the screen design i do want to add some additional formatting here i'm going to add a few different rules now we're going to have our pdf ids appear here they're going to be actually be hidden but they're going to be here the ids the pdf name is here the type is going to be here so let's just say we have test and then test two okay so what i want to do is i want to add conditional formatting on alternating rows and then what i want to do is if the file id here matches the file id here i want this row to be highlighted so we're going to add conditional formatting based on that so it's going to be conditional formatting based on a lot of these rows so i'm going to go into home conditional formatting manage rules and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to do new rule i'm going to use a formula and the formula is going to be based on two conditions for alternating rules. So equals and two rules. The first rule is going to be, I want to make sure that there is a value in the first row here in column D. Now that's going to be for every single row. So I'm going to remove the dollar sign does not equal empty. So that's the first rule. I also want it on the even rows. Now that's the mod of row two. That's auto hotkey that automated that typing. So the rules are for even rows and D seven or any row subsequent is not empty. So we're going to give that a format. And I'm just going to use a fill here and then I'm going to use the lightest one, which is right about here. And then I'm going to use a white color here too. So I want to use the same color. The reason I use fill effects is because this is where our saved colors show up. If I click on our standard colors here, they're not going to show up. So they don't show up here, but they do show up in fill effects. And I also want to add some borders onto that with our standard default color, which is here. And I'm going to use dotted lines on the left, the bottom and the right. And we're going to click OK. And I'm going to copy this rule here. And I'm going to click OK. Now, the reason I'm copying it because I want to create a new rule very similar to that, except this one's going to be for odd rows. So for odd rows, which is going to be one, I'm going to give that a unique format as well. The borders are going to be the same as what we've done. I'm going to use the darker color, the dotted line on the left, the bottom and the right. But this one's going to contain a fill of white. So it's going to be alternating white and light green, clicking OK and clicking OK. The last rule is going to be based on the selected matching. So we're going to create a brand new rule using a formula. Also two conditions equals and first condition is I want to make sure that PDF ID is not empty. So B2 does not equal empty. The second rule is that PDF 
ID located in B2 is going to be equal to whatever is located in C in any subsequent row starting in row 7. So because it's subsequent row, I'm going to remove the dollar sign and put 7. So those are the two rules. This one's going to have a very unique look. I'm going to give it a fill effects. I want this to be on a darker color. So we're going to use these two colors right here here and then I want the font of white and bold so the font is going to be bold and white so that means it's going to be selected now I click OK and also we can change these to a larger row 999 right I'm going to copy this and then paste that applies to for each one so they each have applies to oops and applies to so we're going to click apply here click OK so we have our alternating rows here as we add data here and we see if we change this to two, then our selected rows automatically going to change. And that's exactly what I want. Perfect. So we have our conditional formatting. Our formats are set and we can then add some information. So our summary here, let's format this one. I want this to be the left and up and a PDF. Okay, things are looking pretty good here and everything's been designed. Now let's focus on the code. So the first thing we want to do is we want to be able to add a PDF. Now when we add a PDF, there's an engine that we're going to be using, an API, that's going to actually upload that PDF for us online and it's going to analyze it and then it's going to be able to make decisions. So what we need is a third party tool to help us with that. And that third party tool is called Chat PDF. It is a great tool and it comes with a ton of free credits, which is really helpful. So we are going to get tons of free credits and let's just take a quick look at this. So it's called chat PDF and this can do a lot of different things. You can chat with any PDF. So what we're going to use is we're going to use the API. Now you can use this manually. You can drag and drop it here, your PDF and start chatting or with a browsing from your computer or from a URL, but we're going to use the API, which is the code that's behind this. And we'll go into some of the documentation on that, but that's essentially what we're doing. We're uploading it, but we're just using Excel and then we're going to be able to interact with it get a summary, chat with it, discuss it, learn more information. So what you'll do is you want to get a free account. Once you get a free account, which is what I'm using, you can upload two PDFs, but this is just for uploading. We are on the developers section here. Inside the developers section, you can get 5,000 PDF pages per month, which is pretty cool. And we can get our 500 messages per month too, and it resets every month. So that's pretty good for the free plan. So that's exactly what we're going to be using. You also get an API key and you'll need that API key. So make sure when you do sign up your free account, you copy that API key. It is that API key that you want to move over inside this and you want to place that directly inside here, our chat PDF API key which is located in C2. So you want to paste yours into that field there. And that field has a named range already. So that's very, very important. So if we look into the formulas, name manager here, we have a chat PDF key located here. So you see it's admin. So it's called chat PDF key. It's a named range that's focused on C2 in the admin. Once we have it in a named range called chat PDF key, we can interact with it inside the code. So make sure you get signed up. I'll include the link down below. So make sure you get the link down below that'll get you all the free credits that you need and make sure you sign up. And then what you will do is you will be able to paste your PDF key. Now, what we're going to be using is what's called the API and we're going to be going into this. So we get a lot of free credits. So there's some things you can do add PDF manually, which we don't need or add PDF via URL, which we probably don't need, but we're going to add it via file upload, which is really, really cool. That means any file on your computer, you're going to upload it. We're going to use this code here. Then we're going to be able to chat with it, which is very, very cool. And we're going to be able to ask follow up questions. So that means when we're chatting with it, we will be able to ask an original question using some code or a follow up question using some code. And with the follow up questions, we basically have to load in the previous chat and then we'll get a response and then we'll do something. So that's kind of a rough rundown of exactly what we're going to be using with this chat PDF API. So it's going to be very cool. So back into the application, we'll be revisiting this API very, very soon. So what we're going to be doing back inside the design here, I'm going to go into the summarize here and I want to assign this. I've got a macro that we're going to be going over. It's the first macro. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the control and I'm going to assign the macro that we're going to be going over. Click assign macro and I'm going to click. I've got two workbooks open, so I want to make sure it's this workbook and it's called browse for PDF file. So that's going to be the same one we're going to go over. So I'm going to click OK. Now, if I want to know which macro is there, I just click assign macro and I see it's assigned. If I want to edit that, which is what we're going to be going, we're going to be going into the developers. 
So inside the Visual Basic Library, we're going to be going into the editor there. And I want to make sure you do Alt F11. It's a shortcut to get there. If you don't have the Developers tab open, you can just right click, customize the ribbon, and make sure the developer is selected there. So once inside there, I've got several modules in here. We're going to take a quick look. I've got two workbooks. This is our sample that I've got on another screen. This is the one that we're working on here. So I can probably close the sample so we don't get confused. Okay, now that that's been closed, we've got four different screens an admin a chat database we have a pdf database and we have the summarized pdf so this is the summarized pdf screen right here that's the one we're going to be putting our focus on and also i've got modules chat pdf modules which we'll be using for chat the pdf document modules which could be using for saving updating and we have the uploading when we're uploading a file this is the one we're going to be focused on called upload file that's the module so we've got dimensioning some variables here we're going to request the url as a string the source id the source id is something that we need to get from it so this is very important because i have many pdfs we want to be able to interact with different pdfs right so what we need to do is differentiate between which pdf and let me just show you that once again so when we add a pdf when we upload it the response that they're going to give us back is right here i want to show you that response the response is the source id it starts with s r c underscore and then some id so this is what we need so we need to save this individual source meaning we're going to give them our pdf file they're going to give us back a source id once we want to chat or do anything with that particular PDF, it is that source ID that we need. Every single PDF has a different source ID. So when we look inside our PDF database here, we've got a PDF ID, we've got a name, we've got the local path. This is where it's located on our server here. This one doesn't look correct path. And then what we want to do is we also have that source ID. So these are the individual source IDs for any given PDF that's gonna help us. We've got the type, and we have the summary here very good so how do we do that so let's just delete this one because i don't think that's going to help us so now what we want to do now that we understand we have the source we want to upload it i want to send our pdf to chat pdf and i want it to give us back that source id so that is what we're tied to on this button and that's the macro that we're going to go over right now so we need that source id messages and i'll go over these there are a lot of string variables and the http object which we need to send or receive information so it's very important now when we browse for the pdf file we're going to mention the selected pdf path as a string file dialog as a file dialog now when i add a new pdf i want to clear some fields right if i'm adding a new one i want to clear the pdf name i want to clear the pdf type any summary that might be there for the existing i also want to clear the selected pdf id at b2 the local path, the source ID. Okay, so I wanna clear these fields out automatically. Now I'm gonna put in four required fields. So I'm gonna do this, equals count A. I wanna make sure that before saving that we do have a local path. I also gonna hold down the control. I also wanna make sure that we have a source ID. I wanna make sure that we have a PDF name and I wanna make sure that we have a PDF type. Summary is not required. So that means using count A that there's gonna be four required fields. Once we have information in four of those fields here, when this goes to four, we see that we have all the required fields that will be able to save our PDF. If not, we're not going to allow the user to save the PDF unless this number goes to four, and that's why it's important. So that's going to be very important for saving our PDF. Let's continue on. So what we want to do is we want to clear out all those fields. I'm also going to have the chat box. So remember that chat box here? that name i want to clear this out too this is called chat box remember inside going to developers we don't see the name design mode selecting on it we see it's called chat box developer design mode out we want to interact with it so we see the chat box we also want to clear out it's automatically when we use the code name sum pdf dot chat box it already comes up here so we know we've got the name dot value equals empties okay so basically we're just clearing out the value of the chat box and it comes up automatically when you have the name right i'm also remember we have a preview of the pdf here we're always going to give that a unique name it's always going to be called pdf preview if there's any pdf preview any existing one i want to delete it we're going to create a new one for each one we load so what we can do is we can delete it that's simply going to be a shape on the sheet called pdf preview however if it doesn't exist it will create an error so we've wrapped it in on and resume next 
and on error go to zero very important next up what we want to do is we want to focus on that file dialog object so we're going to create that setting the file dialog equals application file dialog we've already dimensioned it as a file dialog here we're simply setting up we want to create a file so we're looking for a specific file we need to set the properties of that file dialog so i'm going to instruct the user with a title select a pdf file to upload i want to clear any previous filters very important because we want to make sure if there's pictures or anything else i want to clear it out and i want to give the user the option to selecting only a pdf file so any file that ends in pdf is going to come up in only those files if for some reason they don't select anything we're simply going to end it ends all macros without selecting anything so it's going to end if they do select something what i want to do is i want to put that full file path remember that full file path i want to put that right here called local path i'll put that in b5 so also what we're going to do i want to take the name i'm going to set a default name and we're going to put it inside g2 so that's very important now what we want to do is i also want to run the macro called pdf preview so i want to preview that and i want to run a macro called upload the pdf document this is going to be the uploaded for our api which is going to get us our source id very important for that document source id and i also want to run a macro to preview it now to preview it is this one right here so what we're going to be doing let's just stop the code and see what happens continuing on so what we're going to do is we're going to add a pdf then we're going to get a browse so we can browse for any pdf that we want let's say this one how to sell online this is uh, i think this one's pretty good so once we have this one here i'm going to select it and it's going to open it up and what it's going to do is going to stop right there so we see that it's got our entire path here so it's got that long long path that we probably don't need and we also want to make sure that we have our name here which we can change of course if we want and now what we're going to do is we're going to send it to the next one which is pdf preview so as we use f8 it's going to go to this macro so what we're going to do is once again we're going to delete any document that might be there called pdf preview so we're going to delete that if for some b5 is empty b5 is that file path very important so we need that so if for some reason that's empty we're going to exit the sub we're going to turn off application screen updating i want to take that entire path in b5 and i'm going to put it in a string variable called pdf path and then for some reason if it's a bad path we're going to go to bad path which is simply going to go down here and it's going to turn application screen updating however if it's a good path what we're going to be doing is we're going to create an object an ole object that's going to be able to insert that pdf inside our application to do that we just need the pdf pile link we need to link to it as false or if we want to display it as an icon which is false and we want to give it a unique name called pdf preview so that's going to create that inside our document so it's going to automatically create it there as you see it here and now luckily it's been positioned already in the right spot and so as we move through here whoops let's continue on here we kind of skip went with this we went a little bit farther than i want so we're going to set it a width what is the width of that once it gets created we're going to focus on it i want to give it a unique width what is that width i want that width to be the entire width of columns g through i so notice the width is the same as the columns which is kind of nice so the, what we don't want to do is i don't want to set the width and the height meaning i just want to set one and let the height be whatever it is so the width is important to us the height is not necessarily important but the width is so i'm setting the width to g through i since the aspect ratio is already locked by default we don't need to worry about that i just want to set the left position to g8 and the top position to g8 so it's going to set that upper left corner to g8 notice g8 that's the upper left corner and that's it that's all we need to do great so that's it and then we turn on application screen update very good next up is the upload pdf document that's the next step right the next macro that we're going to go over which is called upload pdf and we're already inside this as we move through f8 so we're going to use file contents as a byte body and stream we're going to be needing some objects so we declare the variables inside the given macro our focus is on our summary pdf now what we have is we have an api key that's a string variable and remember it's coming from that named range that we caught and because we have it in a named range we can use brackets called chat pdf key remember we did that i also want to have a username i've created a username here inside the admin screen you can move over to the admin and i've got a username so that's going to help us for chat it's called username so because i have a named range called username 
I can then use that in the code called user name. We're going to create a constant boundary as a string and that's just kind of going to help us create this because we need to make sure that the PDF we upload is in byte format. So this creates a boundary as a string. It's just kind of a necessary step for that. We want to create that request URL. Where do we get that URL from? It's going to come right here. Add PDF file via upload. This is what we're doing. So it's called an endpoint. We're going to create a post and we need this right here called v1 sources add file so this is where we get this endpoint right here this is the endpoint url and that's exactly where we come up with it now what we need is also the pdf path we already have that that's located in b5 so we have that and we need to check to make sure it is an accurate pdf and also we need to make sure that it is not empty so we can do that if the pdf file is empty or we're going to check on the accuracy of that path or the directory of the pdf file vb directory equals empty then we're going to let the user know that they have an incorrect path so it's okay you know we skip that everything's okay we're going to set the file name i want to know the file name that's going to be in g2 so we're setting the file name it's a long file name if it's empty we now have to let the user know to please make sure to enter a file name next up we're going to create an object right this is very important so we're going to send some information to our api and to do that we need an http object so we're going to create that we're going to use the win http request 5.1 to do just that next up again we're using the post as mentioned inside the api we must use a post so that's exactly what we're going to do the request needs to be in the form data and this sample code of course they don't really have vba basic but we can get some information from either python curl or this so basically we need to send the api key we need to send the file information path to pdf and we're going to add the file so we've got kind of all of that so it's kind of a sample code this is a javascript code this is the python code and the curl code great so we have that now what we're going to do is we're going to send that header right we need to send our api key just as they've asked here the content type is a multi-part form data and the boundary so that's the content type that's very very important so we can send that next up we need to define that body it gets a little bit complicated here so if you want to copy and paste my code it's fine it is quite complex we're simply forming the body in a way that when we upload these files it understands so we're creating this boundary and we want to make sure that we're sending the body body has to contain information content form contains the file and then the file name plus file.pdf and a new line content type is the application octet -E stream so basically this is all the information that they gave us here so we need to make sure that we're creating all this information here especially in the node javascript we use some of the code here and the information that helped us here so we're creating this stream here that's where we get all the information from and we just convert it to vba and then what we want to do is we want to create a stream so basically we need to convert this to binary file it gets a little bit confusing here but don't worry no worry problem you don't need to understand every we're going to create object adobo stream we're going to open it set an initial position a binary and bytes to body this is a function that basically this function takes a string as an input converts it to binary data so basically we're taking this file that we're sending it we're converting it into a format that it understands which is a binary format so this pdf it needs to convert it to binary so we're going to use two functions read binary and function two bytes so basically it sends it into binary format and it can read this so it's kind of a nice feature that we're able to automatically send information through binary right it's just like it's taking it apart and putting it in the format that it understands and that's exactly what we're doing so it's a binary format so then we're going to just continue on with that as we bring it and then we're setting the initial position now this is the part where we actually send the request so we've converted it to binary we've created all the information exactly in the format that they wanted for this api and now we're going to send it so we're sending the request and it'll take just a moment before we get the response back now what is this response let's view the immediate window and i want to clear anything that might be in the immediate window so we're going to click in the immediate window i'm going to control a and delete before we get to that now that everything's been cleared i'm going to use the tab as i use the f8 and we see that we have a source id this is exactly what i want right here so i want to extract only that source id for the document so we got the response which is the source id i don't need anything else i don't need this 
and I don't need the last two characters. So how can we do that? Well, I want to make sure that we got the right. If for some reason I had one PDF, it could not read. So if the response equals could not read, then we need to let the user know that they should try a different uh, PDF. But this one's read fine. So what we're going to do is we've already debugged the response. We don't need this twice, but uh, that's okay. We just need it one here. Uh, I've shown you what that looks like. Whoops, let's go back. I've shown you what that response looks like. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that we're removing everything. We can use the mid function to do that. Let's go back down where we are here, which is right here. So what I want to do is I want to use the mid. The mid function is going to allow us to extract only this part so to do that i want to use 14 that's our starting point so we have all the text and then we have a starting point if you want to know what those parameters are we can just click here so we see the mid is the entire string start as a long meaning it's whole number where do we start and then the entire length so where are we going to start it out i want to start out at 14 so i'm going to count one two three four all the way up to 14 so our starting point is right here 14th character then our length is simply the entire length of all these characters minus 15 which is going to remove all these characters the 13 that was starts and the two at the end so basically it's going to remove those characters because we want everything minus 15 characters and this is our starting point right here perfect so what's that going to do let's clear that out here and then we have another debug which is what i want to show you so let's go back to there as we tab through this here and we want to make sure that we put the source id so we're going to move through it here we debug now our remaining source id is only the source id and that's it i want to take that source id and i also want to put it inside b6 so that's it that's all we're doing with the macro if we take a look back inside our application here we see inside b6 is going to take on that source id that's exactly what i want and now what we want to do is just click save so the next step is to save it so we've got our source id that's all we want now we can work with it so next step is to save it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to right click assign the macro both to the icon and the button and we have all the way down here save or update pdf clicking okay so i'm going to save it please make sure to add a pdf name okay so we need to add name let's just call this instagram marketing for business i'm going to get rid of all of that on the name is unnecessary i'm going to give it a type because we have some required fields so we're going to call this marketing and now we've got all the required fields notice this is for save it is that macro save that we're going to go over right now and moving back inside the vba editor we're going to turn our attention to the module called pdf doc macros inside that module we're going to come across one of the macros that we're going to go over called save pdf and as mentioned for you before we need to make sure that in b7 it is not less than four those are the number of required fields meaning local path source id pdf name and the pdf type so all of those are necessary so we're going to focus on the sum pdf sheet that's summary pdf if b7 is less than four we're going to let the user know with a message box to please make sure to upload a pdf a name and a type before saving so those are all important we're going to exit the sub we also want to check i want to differentiate if it's been saved before or not we know if pdf id when we click add new this pdf id is cleared out automatically and so if the id here is empty then we see when i click delete the row that's associated will also be empty so we want to ensure that if b3 is empty we know that it is a new pdf and that we must assign it a brand new row and a brand new id and that's just what we're going to do if b3 equals empty it is a new pdf we're going to get the first available row inside our pdf database which is here that first available row is going to be 10. we also need to get it a brand new id that next available id is going to be located inside b4 so we must get both of those the pdf row inside our pdf database the last row with the value plus one is the first available row okay so once we have that we also need to get the next pdf id that's going to come directly from b4 we're going to place it in b2 i'm also going to take that pdf id from b2 and i'm going to place it in the first column in the pdf row i'm going to place that directly inside the first column here next up we're going to use data mapping these five fields the name the local path the source id the pdf type and the summary i've mapped them out to all those fields g2 is the pdf name that's g2 right here i2 of course is the pdf type the local path is b5 b6 is the source id and the summary is located in g3 so all of those fields are located right here b6 
I2 and G3. So all we need to do is run a loop from two all the way to six, six being the last column here. And we wanna make sure to load that loop. I'm gonna take everything in those individual fields and place them in the given row here using what we call data mapping. Great, so understanding that if it is an existing PDF, the only thing we need to do is extract the row directly from B3. Now we're ready to run our loop, which is going to basically take everything in the given range, that range is located in row one of the PDF column, so everything in that range, and we're gonna save it directly to the database. We run the loop from two to six. So what that does is it takes all the data inside these fields here, here, here and here and here and we're going to bring it directly into the database and then what we're going to do is we're going to run refresh the pdf list that's the macro that we're going to go over right now we don't have any on freelancing let's just do all types so it's going to run a few times it's going to run when we make a change to e4 however we need to activate that because i haven't done that or it's going to run when we save or delete it so once we save it i want to refresh that list and what's inside that list the first thing we're going to do is we're going to clear out anything from c7 so here's c7 inside here we're going to put those ids all the way from e and all the way down and basically what i want to do is i want to run an advanced filter based on whatever type the user has selected here if we go inside our pdf database we have all of our pdfs here what i want to do is i want to filter them based on the pdf type and that filter is going to be a criteria right here and i've got a formula here that's going to help us so what i'm going to look i'm going to look inside e4 if e4 equals all types in that case i simply want to return does not equal and that's going to mean that regardless as long as it has a value every type is going to be returned that's only if it's all types. If it's not, we're simply gonna return what's inside E4. And that means as I change this to something such as Excel Learning, and we move beyond it, we're gonna see that this now changes to Excel Learning. When we run that advanced filter, those results are gonna come right here. So we want the ID, the name, and the type. Once we determine all those results, we're gonna bring those values into columns C, D, and E accordingly. When do we want it to happen? I want it to happen on a few instances. I want it to happen when we save a pdf right when we save it we're going to run this macro this is the macro that we're going to go over we also want to run it when we make any type of a change to e4 so that's going to happen on a change event if i go inside our summary pdf we see that we have some macros that are commented out i'm going to uncomment them out and we're going to take a look at one that's simply the worksheet change meaning when we make any change to e4 and then we want to run the macro refresh list. So that means that if I change this to all types, it's gonna run that macro. And we see that we have the list here. If I decide I'm going to change it to Excel Learning, only those with Excel Learning are going to show up. So that's a great way to create a filter based on the PDF. And we have our IDs right here. And we notice that we have ID eight. Our conditional formatting is working perfectly. So let's take a quick look inside this macro. We're gonna close out our code within the sum, and it's gonna pull back up this refresh list. So the first thing we want to do is clear out any data starting in C7 all the way through E, and then a large row. So we're gonna clear the previous data. We're then going to turn our attention to the PDF database where we determine the last row. We're going to run an advanced filter all the way through PDF type. I don't think we need summary inside there. Our criteria is going to be J2 through J3 and the results are going to come M through O. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to determine using a long variable called the last row, the last row of our database once we have that last row if for some reason it is less than four that means we have no data we can exit the sub if we do have data we're going to run it all the way through column e it's just pdf type we don't need to use the summary because our results or our criteria does not contain summary therefore we don't need to include it in our original data if we did want summary here inside our results we would then include column f the criteria is going to be j2 through j3 and the results are going to come m2 through o2 we're going to determine the last results row based on column M. If the last row is less than three, that means we have no results. We can exit the sub. If we do have data, all we need to do is take the data from our columns M through O, the last results row, and bring them over to C7 through E and the last results row plus four. Our results start on row three. However, our destination starts on row seven, so there's a difference of four. 
that is why we're adding four here. So running that code simply when we save or when we do that. So for example, if I decide I'm going to save anything, I'm just going to click save and it's going to refresh that list. So if I decide I'm going to just change this name and I want to save it, I want that name reflected right here inside. So we see it's reflected. Very good. So that's on the save. So we focused here, we went on save or update, but let's take a quick look up here on to our load PDF. When does load happen? When do we want to load? When I make a selection change on a value and I want to make sure as long as there's a value inside column D, I want to run the macro. When we make a selection change, it is that sheet that we want. That's going to happen directly on our summary PDF sheet. And that's the worksheet selection change, which can be found here. If the user selects more than one cell, we can exit the sub. If the user selects anywhere between D7 and E and a large row, and D and the row that they've selected contains a value, meaning if they've selected on something empty, nothing's going to happen. As long as D contains a value, I want to run a macro that's going to load. But what I also want to do is I want to take whatever ID that's located in column C and I want to place it in B2. So we're going to do those two things. The first thing is B2 is going to take on whatever's in column C and the row that they've selected. It's going to add that ID. Next up, we're going to run the macro to load the PDF. So that's the macro that we're going to go over right now. So with that, I want to make sure that we have a row. If there's no row that's associated with that PDF, we need to let the user know to please select a correct PDF. So we're going to do that with this message box and we're going to exit the sub. We're going to clear out all the fields. The only field I'm not clearing out is B2. I want to clear out whatever's located in the chat box here in case there's any values here. I will also want to make sure that any shape called PDF preview, I want to delete it. If it doesn't exist, it could create an error. That's why we're error trapping it right here. I want to extract the row that's located in B3 and then simply we're going to use that reverse data mapping instead of taking whatever's inside these cells and saving it to the database i'm now going to take whatever's inside the database and i'm going to place it in g2 b5 b6 i2 and g3 respectively so that's exactly what we're going to do so we're simply loading the information in as we move it and next up on the load when we do load we are going to run two macros the first we are going to load the pdf preview which is going to load that preview of the pdf and the second macro is we're going to load any existing chats inside here so we have all the chats available to us here let's zoom out a little bit so we have that great so we see we've got that so those are the two macros that we're going to go over now the first of which is the pdf preview i believe that was on the updated file here which was right here pdf preview i think it doesn't really belong inside this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use Control c copy that and i think i prefer it inside this here because we have pdf preview preview so i'm going to place it right here i think it plays better right here so i want it in this module so pdf preview is next and then we're going to go chat so i think it's much better place there okay great so the first thing once we preview it any existing preview that might be there we're going to delete that and also i need to make sure that we do have a file path that file path that's going to get us that preview is located in b5 if for some reason b5 is empty then we do not need to continue and we can move on so b5 must contain a value we're going to turn off application screen updating making sure that we do turn it back on before we exit the macro we're going to then create a string variable called pdf path i'm going to place whatever's located in b5 in it that's going to be that pdf file path if for some reason there's an error i'm going to go to bad path and that's simply going to drop it down here and turn on application screen updating if the path is incorrect or something like that once again we're going to add objects here the ole object using the path link is false displays icon and the pdf preview then just as we did before we're going to set the width is going to be the same width as the columns g through i we're going to set the top position and the left position the left position being g8 the top position being g8 that's easy so that's all we need to do remember i'm not setting the height i'm just setting the width equal to whatever's here and then the height can be whatever it is so it's kind of nice it's automatically set up so that way it doesn't get warped or constricted very good so that's the pdf preview how about the chat history i want to load all the given chat history now this is kind of a nice feature inside our chat database here we have information so we got a pdf id that's very important so that i know what pdf is located so we can keep the chat separate on a per id basis the date and time that can be helpful maybe later on I don't, we're not really using it and then who sent the chat was it the user that name is going to come directly from here username 
I also want to know or is it the chat PDF we're calling it chat PDF that's going to be the other end of the chat and so it's going to be one of those two so the question and the answer kind of like that so I want to save all that and then the given database row so what I really want to do is I want to set a criteria I want to know all of the chats for a given PDF and we're going to place that criteria right in H3 that's going to come directly from here whatever's inside B2 I want it placed directly inside our chat database criteria here so it's coming directly from B2 as we can see the formula up here the results I want the sender the text and the row so I want all that information then what we're going to do is we're going to run a loop but I want to run it from the top to the last so here I want that information to be displayed here so we want to load all the information directly in the text box so that's what we want to happen so how do we do that well, we do that with this macro here called load chat so the first thing what we want to do is we want to clear the existing chat that might be located here. so any chat that might be located here we're going to clear it out so I'm going to use the sum PDF that chat box dot text equals empty and that's going to simply clear it out we're going to turn our attention to that chat database again determining the last row running an advanced filter with our criteria in h2 through h3 and those results j through l so we're going to run that here a through e our criteria is h2 through h3 and our results coming to j2 determine the last row we're going to run a loop now what I want to do is I want to build out what's inside this text box some PDF text box it's going to be equal whatever's currently there plus I want to add in what's in J which is the sender plus a colon then a brand new line then whatever's located inside K which is the message let's bring it over here a little bit whatever's located in K and then two new lines so it's going to look something like this I want the sender with a colon then a new line then the question then I want two new lines one here and one here then I want the other one the chat PDF then the answer and so we're going to continue like that so it's going to build out this and it's kind of nice we also need a scroll bar on this so let's do that I think I forgot to do that it's kind of nice so let's do that back into the developer here design mode here selecting on that and then what we're going to do is we're going to go into the properties here and we want to make sure this scroll bar is visible so we can look down here under scroll bars we want a vertical scroll bar so I'm going to select on vertical and then that's exactly all we need to do so then we're simply going to get out of design mode and then we can close the properties out perfect and now if we have let's take a look at one that's got enough here whoops PDF path we just need to define this variable here so that's fine dimension because we moved it over PDF path as string that's fine no problem and then running that because we moved it over very good so that's going to get us that and now what we want to do is we want to make sure that we have one let's pull it up one of these uh bigger ones I want to make sure there we go there's our scroll bar and that's exactly what I want very good so continuing on inside the macro what we want to do is we want to load that chat up so inside the documents as we just kind of build out this text we're building out this text box one line at a time as we loop through the results starting from three to the last results row so we're going to loop through all the results assuming that there are and we're simply building the text box contents based on what is that and then the last thing is I'm going to activate that text box and that kind of helps bring things to the front so we're simply activating and notice that they have Vietnamese here too which is nice so we see that we've got that next up what do I want to show you well we've got our load PDF we did that we did the PDF preview very nice update and refresh the PDF list we went over that already delete PDF that's the last macro in this module and then I'm going to show you that chat module so first of all we want to say are you sure you want to delete this we need to make sure that there is a row that's associated if b3 is empty then we're going to skip delete b3 that is the associated database row that we're going to be deleting if that is empty then we can skip it if it's not empty we're going to set that in a variable we're going to delete the entire row I'm going to clear all the previous fields here so that's very important and what we're going to be doing is we're going to clear the chat box out we're going to delete any preview and then we're going to run a macro that refreshes that pdf that is all we need to do we also need to delete the chat log I'm going to oh sorry this comes up first here delete chat log that's very important I need to delete the chat log so that's all part of that so that's going to happen twice we can delete the chat log without deleting it in fact I'm going to assign that macro to this button here so what we're going to do is we're going to assign the macro and that's going to delete 
the individual chat log. So we're going to go over that right now. And that's going to be right up here. You may not want to delete the PDF, but you may want to delete it. So let's say I want to see this out and I've got some Vietnamese here, but I want to delete the chat log. I can select this. And how's that going to work? Remember, that's going to happen when we are deleting the PDF or when the user selects this button. And to do that, we're going to let the user know, are you sure you want to delete all the chat logs for this document? Yes or no. And then what we're going to do is we're going to clear out any text inside that chat box. We are going to make sure that we have B2. If their B2 doesn't contain a value, it means they have no particular PDF ID. I want to make sure that we are going to exit out of that. So that's very important. If it does, we're going to use that, of course, that's located here. That's going to create that result. If I'm going to delete all these rows, I need to run another advanced filter to get all the chats for a given ID. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move in reverse from the last row all the way to the row three. I'm going to take each individual row, put that into variable and clear the row out. I'm not going to delete it. I'm just going to clear the row out. Then I'm going to resort the list. So that's exactly what we're going to do with that chat database. Determine the last row. We're going to run another advanced filter just as we did before. But this time we are going to run it in reverse. In fact, I want to run it last result. It's just better. Actually, if we delete it, it's okay either way. If you decide we're clearing them out, but if you delete the rows, we should do last row to three step minus one. Let me just show you. If you decide to delete them, it should be last result row like this one, two, three step minus one. So that means if you're deleting a rows, but since we're clearing the contents out, we can just simply do three to the last result row. Why would it make a difference? Because let's say I delete this row here. It's going to mess up whatever's located in here. So I prefer to clear the contents, just clearing these contents here, not deleting the rows, then resorting the list. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So three to the last row, the chat row, of course, is database row is located in column L. As we see here, I want to grab that database row. Then what we're going to do is we're going to clear the contents all the way from A to E. We're going to simply do that for every single row. Now we're going to resort the list. And what that does is it gets rid of the empty rows. So with the sort inside our chat database, we're going to add a key. Again, I want to add that database in because we're inside a brand new width. A4 is the key. That's the first value. I want to sort on ascending. And then what we're going to do is going to set range to A4 all the way through E in the last row and apply the sort. So that's going to do just that. Great. So let's say we want to delete the chat. Right, so I've selected on this and I want to delete the chat. Let's bring that over here. It's going to get us, are we sure we want to delete it? And it's going to say yes, and we can delete that chat. So it's deleted the chat log. Let me check one more thing. I want to make sure, are you sure if application caller is delete log? Okay, that we need to name this. I'm going to do that here. So that means I only want the confirmation. I'm going to explain that because it's kind of important. So we're going to go into our selection and I want to give these a very unique name, delete log. That means that I want to give a confirmation. Notice that confirmation didn't come up. Now, when we delete a PDF, and in fact, I'm going to assign this macro as well. We've got that, assign the macro, and that's gonna be delete the entire PDF. So when I delete the PDF, we have a confirmation already. Are you sure you wanna delete that? Now it's gonna delete both the chat log and the information. However, if I'm just deleting the chat log, I wanna make sure that we get a confirmation. Notice that that didn't show up the first time because I didn't name the properties. We're doing this twice. Delete the chat log. We're doing it once when the user clicks this button. We're doing it twice when the user deletes a PDF. But the point is I only want to have one confirmation. I don't want to say, are you sure you want to delete this PDF? And then again, are you sure you want to delete this chat log, right? I only want to have this confirmation. Are you sure you want to delete the chat logs for this document? Only when the user has clicked this button specifically. How do I know that they've clicked this button? If the name of the button is delete log or the shape, they've clicked on the icon, they've clicked on the button, only then do we ask that confirmation. That's why it didn't appear because I hadn't quite named this buttons yet, but now I have. So as soon as I gave the names, that way we can run this macro twice, but only one time the confirmation. Why is that? 
because if we see this delete PDF, the name of this button isn't delete log. The name of this isn't delete log. So we're not going to get the confirmation that we want to. Only going to get it when we do this. So deleting the chat log, now we get the confirmation. And if we say yes, it's going to go through and delete it, although there is none. So now it's gone. So when I select this and select this, we see that we've got this already set up. Okay, very good. So now let's go over how do we actually chat with it. So if I would say, please give me the most important uh, facts on this document. It's going to do just that when I click this button. That button, of course, we do need to assign the macro, and that's the macro that we're going to go over next. So we're going to move down here, and I'm going to find the macro that's associated with that. And we're going to call this send message. So send message is fine. And I'm going to click it, and it's going to do that. It's going to send the message, and we're going to go over that right now. So we see this document challenges traditional Excel development practices. So it gives us a nice little summary of that. So that is the macro that I'm going to go into right now. So what I'm going to do is bring this over here. Chat is the module we'll focus on is chat PDF, and that's the final module we're going to go into. And I should probably put this message up here. So basically, I'm going to copy this. I just want it at the top. That's all. No difference. So send message. What I want to do is I want to differentiate between the first message or subsequent messages, because that's kind of important. Oh, I want to add one more thing here. This enter your question to chat. I want to add some conditional formatting here. So I'm going to go into the home and I've already copied that conditional formatting and I want to add a new rule and I want to use the format that contain and it's going to be based on some specific text here. If it contains into your question, I want to give it italicized here and I want to give it a, let's say, font color here and that's okay. So that means it's kind of instructional. It's kind of nice. So that way you have that. Okay. I like that better. Great. So the idea is this, I need to differentiate between a first question or a subsequent question. Why do I need to do that? Well, I need to do that inside the API. We're focused on this part called chat. Our request ask a single question is here. Ask a follow-up question here. So the code's different based on whether it's an initial question or the first question. Why is that important? Because if it's not an initial question, I can ask a follow-up question that doesn't need so much. So please give me the most part. Now what I can do is I can add additional questions, follow-up questions based on the reader. So I can say, can you provide more details and an in-depth answer on the original question. So when I do that, it's going to look at that original question and it's going to come back with more. And I need to wrap the text on that. So now when I send it, now we've got a more detailed message and I just need to do one thing and that's wrap the text on here. Very good. So it remembers this document. So it's expanded on that. So it remembers the original question. So there's a difference between the initial request and the subsequent request. So I'm going to have two macros on that. So we need to differentiate. I'm going to look inside on this send message. If it's empty, looking inside this chat box, if it's completely empty, we know it's an original message. I'm going to run a macro called send first message. Otherwise, if there's text already inside here, I'm going to use a macro send subsequent message. So the macro that I'll be running is a different macro called send subsequent message. And why is that important? Because the subsequent message must contain the previous conversation, whereas the initial message does not need to contain that. So let's take a look inside both of those. So the first thing, what we want to do, oh, we've got a PDF summary. I'll get that next. That's relatively easy. That's this button here. We're going to do that first message first. So first message. And so basically what we want to do inside the API is we need to send the endpoint is the same here using post. And we're going to ask a single question. So the single question requires a source ID message. We need a role as the user and then the content, which is their question. So basically we need to send that information. We need to know what document we're focused on since we've already uploaded the document and we just need to ask the question. So that's exactly what we're going to send. So it's relatively easy. Just like we did before, we're going to set the HTTP object for the same win request object, getting the API key, which is important. The request URL also very important, which we need. So that request, of course, is chats messages. That is the URL that we've been asked to use, which is right here. So that one we're going to be using. And next up, we also need the username that's going to help us and the PDF ID. That is also the same thing as the source ID. So we do need to send that. So we're going to grab that information. If for some reason it's empty, we are going to exit the sub and let the user know to please add a PDF to chat. We're going to run a post. It's saying what we must do is add that post. So we need to send a post. The request URL is going to be based on this request URL. And then what we're going to do is we're going to send the headers, 
We need to reference sources. This is a possibility if we want to include sources or not, but we're going to keep that as true. Sending the API key as a header, important. Content type is application JSON in this case. So we need to send the application JSON. Very good. So how do we know that it's JSON? If we take a look in our example here, we can see that inside our application development here, let's take a look at response data here inside our curl URL is going to show us that. And right here we see that it's application JSON. So that's the one we want to use or JSON however it's pronounced so we understand that and then we're going to send all that information I want the source ID that's going to come from b6 so we need to make sure that we contain that the PDF ID and the source ID we need both of those if the source ID is empty we're also going to exit the sub we need to send that source ID so it's critical and we also need to send the question right the question is going to be in k35 if the user hasn't asked a question here inside k35 that's what the question is so that has to be available if it's empty or if it's the default text enter you know, put your question i think it should be your your question to chat if it includes that right enter your question to chat making sure it's exactly like that if they've just used the default text i want to let them know i'm going to copy just to make sure it's perfect so then please enter a question to chat right so if it's the default text or it's empty then we're going to exit the sub the language request that's kind of nice what language do we want it in the language is going to be located right here that's called our response language and i want to know what language we want the response in so the language request the string variable here is called response should be in and then the response language and then language so whatever the response i'm going to tack this on to their question so we have the question and i also want to add the language request i want to put both of those so it says can you expand on this a little bit more response should be in english language or whatever i want to send all that information now the request data this is the information that we need to send so this is what the api is requesting that request data is going to be this information right here so all this request is going to be the source id the message the role and the question so that's exactly what we're going to say we need to build up that the source id which is the source id the message the role the user content is the question and the language request so we're combining the question and the language request together so that's going to be the request data this is exactly the body so this is what we're sending now what we're going to do is we're going to send all that information using the http object send we're going to send the request and then we get the response back the response is going to come from here so then again just like we did before let's take a look at what this response looks like and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into the immediate window i want to see what that response exactly as it comes back so we're going to use debug dot print and then response i want to know what it looks like and we're going to bring that to the immediate window so view and i'm just going to clear out whatever might be in the immediate window i'm going to clear that out and we're going to run the macro we're going to ask a follow-up question here so we're going to go inside here actually i need to ask a new question because we're inside the new macro so to do that i'm going to delete this chat log here clicking okay it's going to delete the chat log so this is going to be an initial question can you give me a summary of this document in very basic language okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to click that and it's going to create that initial and it's going to stop which is what i want i want it stopped right there this document is about learning advanced skills and challenges so what i don't want is this content i don't want that and let's take a look here and i don't want that so we're going to remove that so what again we're going to use the mid i'm going to start at the 13 characters and I'm going to use the length of response minus 14. So basically that's going to extract this. I also noticed that when there's a new line, like this response doesn't have it. In other words, there's no line. I want to get a response that does. So I'm going to continue on this because I want to show you something. I'm going to delete this chat once again, click okay. Cause I want a different type of response in a list format. Can you list the top 10 points of this? Because the response is going to be formatted a little bit different in this case so i'm going to click okay and you can see it's really fast it only takes a few seconds maybe what eight or nine seconds and okay it stopped there so here i'm sorry we couldn't find the list of top 10 points however based on document here are some key points this is what i wanted to show you in the response see this this means new line right so whenever we see something like this we need to convert it to a new line i don't want these ends so every time there's a backslash and it means a new line so this means two new lines so it's going to basically give us a list two this is a new line 
And so what I want to do is anytime we see backslash and I want to convert it to new lines. So after we've extracted the first part, which is this part right here, content, then what I want to do is I want to use the replace. Anytime I see a backslash and quotation mark, I'm going to replace it with just the quotation marks. So in case we see that, although I don't see that in this response, but I also want to do something. Anytime we see a new line like backslash n, I want to replace it with a new line. Character 10 in Excel is also a new line. VB new line or VB CRLF will also work, but character 10 works. Character 10 is the return line. So basically we're replacing this with a new line. So that way, as we, let's show you this right here, debug dot print response. So after we replace those, take a look at what it looks like. So I'm gonna use F8 and step through it. So now we see the new line. You see that they're all nicely lined up. So that's the difference. So it's kind of a nice, now we've got a list order. And now we can put anything that might be in there and we're gonna put that inside there. Great, so that's it. That's all we need to do. So now we've got that nice list of those top 10 information that we have on the document. So very, very helpful and very powerful. That's great for the initial, but what about if I wanna create an additional? Let's say, can you give me five more points? Notice I didn't ask the question because this is summaries. I don't need the original question. When I hit that, it's gonna ask a subsequent question. And that's the macro that we're gonna go over right now. So now we've added five more points. It's looking for a specific points. However, based on the content here are five additional key points that might be useful. Very, very helpful. So that is the subsequent question. So let's close this now. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna close this out. We can undo that. So now, again, we're using the same one here called send message. However, the text box is not empty. So that means we're sending the subsequent message. So it's slightly different as we go down here, sending the subsequent messages right here. So I'm gonna do something a little bit different. What I want to do is I want to send all the previous messages up to about six. If we take a look, when we ask, follow, they're calling it follow-up questions, I call it subsequent, same thing. You can include up to six messages in one request. If the total number of open AI tokens in the message is 2,500, the older messages are ignored. So here I want to send the previous five messages, five plus the existing. So it's gonna look something like this. We have the source, the message, the user, the assistant, the user. So it's looking for user, meaning like Fred, the assistant, meaning chat, uh, PDF, and the user. So that's the format it's looking. So that's the one we gotta match. So the idea is kind of like this. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna run another advanced filter. I'm gonna look in the chat log. And here inside the chat log, I'm going to look and I'm gonna send this, then this, and this. This time I'm going in reverse because I want to send the reverse. So let's take a look at something that's got a little bit more data in here, some more information. Let's take a look at that. This one, so what I wanna do is if I wanna ask a subsequent, I want to know the last question asked, which is this one. This is the last answer, this is the question. So this is the one I'll be going in reverse order because I have a maximum of six, so I'm gonna send five chats here plus the question that I'm gonna be asking. So we want to do that because it's asking for that. So we need to keep track of the message number and the last row. So we're gonna do this summary just as we did before. We're taking up all the information. So none of this has changed here from the original. So we have all of that. Source ID, making sure now what we wanna do is we wanna get the chat history. This is important because I need to send the entire chat history or at least up to five messages plus our current message to them so that we can get an answer because the answer needs to be based on context. So again, we're gonna run an advanced filter based on this chat log here, just as we did before. So the advanced filter is no different than we've been over. Now we're gonna loop through the results row. Now I don't want the earliest message. I want to start with the last message and move backwards, okay? They're always gonna be in order. So this time we're starting with the last row and moving up, very important. So we're determining the last results row based on column J for the result row equals the last result row two, three, step one. Remember, add previous chat from last to first, very important. Once we do that, what I want to do is, remember it's looking for assistant or user. It's looking for only those specific words, user or assistant. So we need to match that. How do we know what that is? So if it equals chat PDF, then we're gonna set the role as assistant. Otherwise, the role is user. So we're setting the roles up based on whatever's located in J. So it's either gonna be assistant or user, assistant or user. So I wanna make sure that we have that. Once we have that, then what I wanna do is I wanna set the content. Now the content's based on what's K. It's either the question or the answer. So we're sending both the question and the answer. However, I need to make sure once again, 
that there are no character tens. It cannot read the character tens, but it can read new lines. And it cannot read quotation marks. Here's a quotation mark, but it reads the quotation marks as a backslash and a quotation mark. So we just need to update it for a JSON format. That's very important. So remember, just as we did the reverse, we took it from JSON into a text format. Now we're taking it from a text format back into JSON. Now what we want to do is we want to update the chat data. So this string needs to include all of that. So the string is going to be the role and whatever the role is, which is the user or the assistant, and the content and the content. So basically we're updating. So this chat data is going to build out this string of up to five different messages. So we have the chat data and we're keeping track of the message. If the message number, if it's six, we're exiting the four. Before we've added the fifth one, here's the fifth one. Then this number gets increased to six. And then even before it gets a chance to add another one, we're exiting it. Why is that? Because five plus we're adding on the brand new question. That question gets added on now. Question is going to be located whatever's inside K35. So whatever's located directly in here is that question. So we're adding it. If the question equals empty or the question equals enter your question to chat, then let these know that there's no question. Now, what we also want to do is the language request. That's very important. Response should be in language. So now all we need to do is add in. We've built up our chat data. So we need to add in our question. So the request data is the source ID and the messages. The request data we're adding onto that is the request data and the chat data. So in other words, the request data is automatically added into that. And so we add that. And then we're going to add the language. So we're just continuing to update it. So the request data is simply whatever it is now and the question and the language. So we're adding the chat data, previous chat data, plus the current question, plus the language. And we're sending all of that over there. Again, all the chat data, which is the previous chat data, up to five, we're adding in the requirements, which is the source ID and the messages. We want to have to make sure that it is in the format they want source ID messages. So we need that. Then the chat data. And lastly is the current question. So we're adding all that into this one string and we're going to send it over. Once that request data is completely built with all the information, we are going to send it using the send. Then we're going to get the response back just as we did before. We're going to do the same thing. We're getting rid of the first 13 characters and removing the last two using the mid function. We're going to replace any characters, any, uh, quotation marks with backslash, replacing it with just quotation marks, and any new line with character 10. Then we're simply going to do exactly the same thing. We're clearing whatever question is out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set K35 back to the default, enter your question to chat. The text box is going to equal whatever's currently in the text box and a new line and the username and the colon and a new line and the question and two new lines and the chat PDF and the response that came back. So that's going to add that response and then a new line. So that's going to add that updated. And then what we want to do is we want to add it to the log. So both of these get added to the log. So that means that both macros get added to log, the initial and the subsequent. So the log is simply, I want to keep track of the log and that's very important. So the log is going to take that, look at that first new row. It's going to add the PDF ID in the first column. That PDF ID, of course, is going to come directly from B2 on this sheet. It's also going to take on the date and time that could be helpful at a time in the future. The sender, is it the username or is it chat PDF, the message, and then the row. So we're adding all that in so that we're getting that first available row. We're going to add in the PDF ID, the current date and time, the username, the question, and the row. Then for the response that we get back from there, we're going to add in once again, the PDF ID, the current time, this time chat PDF is the name, the response that they gave us the row, but this is also on the row above. So everything goes in one row below. We're adding an additional row. This is the last row and this is the next row below so that they don't overlap. Then what we want to do is I want to wrap text false. I want to make sure that we're not wrapping text in the log. So that's all. If we were to wrap text, it would look something like this here. And I don't really want that here. So we're just unwrapping false and we're doing it inside the code. So that is how we do that. And clearing chat is simply here, clear chat, which is the text box. Now that doesn't delete the chat. It just simply clears the chat. Maybe you want to start a new chat, but you still want to have the history. So that can be very helpful. So going back in here, clearing the chat, we can do just that. Holding down the control, we're going to assign the macro on that. So we're going to, again, assign the macro and we're going to call this clear chat. And so simply that simply just clears it out 
and clears the text. Get summary, that's the last one that I wanna go over with you now. We're gonna assign that macro, assigning the macro. So looking at that, we see that we have get PDF summary. That's the one I wanted to assign. And that is the one right here. So we're gonna take a look at the top, get PDF summary. That's the last macro. Now it's important to note that inside our admin, we may want to have how many words in our summary. So we can set this to whatever we want within something reasonable. So I'm gonna get a 50 word summary. When I click this button, let's do on this one, we don't have a summary. When I click this button, I wanna get a summary of that document. So it's gonna take just a moment. It'll get that summary. And I also need to wrap the text on here too as well. Very good. So we've now have a 50 word summary of that. So how does that work? So we can do the PDF summary. We're gonna mention the sum words as long. I need to know how many words it should be. And it's based on the named range called summary words. That's the name range that has been set inside the admin screen here called summary words once we have that what we want to do is we want to go back inside and i want to focus on our summary pdf sheet first thing we want to do is clear the contents if there's anything currently here inside g3 all the way through i6 it is a merged cell so we want to include all of those cells within that to clear the contents of any current so to do that g3 through i6 clear the contents we're going to set just as we did before the object here the api key the request url we're going to use just the initial message the pdf id in b2 making sure it's not empty we need the source id that's very important if there's no source id we can exit out of it so what's the question the question is simply please summarize this pdf in how many words that's the question pretty simple and we're simply going to post that just as we did before using our api key application our language request i want to add that on to response should be in language so that means if i decide i want to change the language in the summary so maybe we want it in french here and if we re-click there get summary that's also going to be changed to now it's a french summary so now we have it in French, which is kind of nice. So because we've taken the language request and we've added that into this, the language request gets tagged on after the question. Please create a 50 word summary of this document in French language. So that's it. And then it responds inside the French. So we get our contact in French, changing it back to something that I understand here. So we can change it back to English and then simply run it. And it's very quick. This API is very quick. It takes what, three seconds? I'm not editing it when I get that. So I'm talking the whole time. So you see how quick it is. So again, we're going to send the data. We're going to get the response back. We're going to do exactly the same, replacing the JSON response into characters that we can see and understand. In fact, I'm just going to put this up here. I like it first although it works either way. And then what we want to do is just take that response and put it directly in G3. And then we want to make sure to force the save. So we're going to save it. And that way, if for some reason the user click get summary and they select something else, it's automatically saved in there. Very, very cool and very, very helpful. All right, we went over everything in this. This has been a really great training. If you do like this training, so many ways to support it. I'll be adding new features onto this very document and I'm creating a brand new video just on this just as I do every week for our YouTube and Patreon members so if you have not yet signed up on Patreon now is the time to do that because you get so many benefits for just a few dollars a month that includes a PDF code book where you can go over every single line of code and very organized code in a PDF and you could probably put it inside this too and learn more about that, that that's a good idea put the PDF code book in here and learn ask questions about that that's certainly possible i should have tried that we also have other benefits such as early bird i've got over 100 videos and updated workbooks directly on our patreon platform so i'll include the link down below thank you so much for your continued support i really do appreciate it and we'll see you next week thanks again